Welcome to our 2022 Platte River Basin Conference. My name's Crystal Powers. I am the Research and Extension Communication Specialist at the Nebraska Water Center, so one of the planners, but it's definitely been a joint effort throughout our whole staff. And we're excited to share the next two and a half days with you. I think it's a great time to be talking about the Platte River. How many people here in the room went across the river as they came in? in some form. Yep, we've got most folks, so it's still still a trickle in most spots. We're fortunate over in Lincoln we get the Loop River water dumping in, so we still have some water. I was up on the Platte Tower last week. There's still a good amount of water there, but we all know it's been dry this year, so I think it's a great time to talk about the Platte. Um, first, I'd like to welcome our virtual attendees. This is our first try at a hybrid conference. And so there's pros and cons to that, but we wanted to open it up for those uh, who couldn't travel as far since we were trying to get some folks from Colorado and Wyoming to join in with us. So that gives us that option. We'll try to stay a little bit on schedule for them so it doesn't give us quite as much flexibility here in the room, but I think it'll go wonderfully. We have some wonderful people helping us on the AV side. So what we have a wide range of perspectives and values that we wanted to bring to this conference um, because we all care about the plat. That's what brings us all together today and how we manage this important resource. So as we begin, there's a few folks who are going to welcome us in, um, along for the conference. So first I'd like to introduce Dr. Chitaranjan Ray, the director of the Nebraska Water Center. Crystal, thank you very much. Um, I am Chitaranjan Ray, as Crystal said. I have been the director of, director of Nebraska Water Center for the last nine years, since 2013. Uh, so uh, in the last two or three years, uh, we basically stopped the conference. And uh, now, as Crystal mentioned, it's back to a hybrid mode. And hopefully, next year, it will be all in person. So. Um, we are excited that you are here for the um, Platte Basin Conference here. And uh, this idea came with our partner, uh, Nebraska Audubon, to have something uh, working in the area of uh, the Platte Basin, because this is uh, something the uh, three states, Colorado, Wyoming, and Nebraska rely on for their uh, water resources. Um, so what we did um, with that in mind, uh, we wanted to form this uh, conference. Uh, as you know, the, the North Platte, pretty, pretty much I would say that, that uh, basically the human intervention of the river started much early, and then the South Platte. So hydroelectricity to uh, flood control, surface irrigation, then the groundwater pumpage, then we discovered the surface groundwater connectivity in the cities which rely on the water then. Finally, also, we are uh, cognizant of the need of this water for the biota fish and all those uh, endangered species. So this puts us in a very complex situation that how can we manage this basin at the same time um, go ahead uh, with the economic development and other ideas what we have here. With that, we ex offer you a, an extended programming, our partners here, uh, the, rain, uh, the Rainwater Basin Joint Ventures. Uh, so with their third annual playa and uh, our conference, it's like a joint conference. You will have about four days of uh, efforts here. And this also provides us the opportunity to address various issues in a more holistic way. As you recall, we had a La Nina year last year, drought. Again, it's expected to be another La Nina year. It's cooler Pacific, so drier. Uh, Southwest, I don't know what's going to be in Nebraska, probably the possibly drier like last year. So that's going to be a challenge for uh, not only agriculture, but for uh, cities. If you recall uh, the city of Lincoln, they are expecting that with the current population growth by 2035 and uh, 12 to 13 years from now, they're going to max out their water they're pumping from the Platte River Basin, Platte, the wells on the Platte River. So now they're looking for a second source of water. And also they realize that it, it's 
not wise to put all the eggs in the same basket, especially in the playa. So possibly there is an opportunity to get the water from the Missouri also. So this really a complex situation. Many other cities upstream from uh, uh, Lincoln, like Kearney and Grand Island, even the farthest town uh, on the Wyoming border, Henry, they also have issues with the water quality sometimes. So this really puts us into a um, the great um, you know, uh, situation to address all these issues I mentioned from fish biota to economic development to crop production and uh, the cities. So with that, um, thank you and, uh, and I hope to see you here uh, the next two and a half days. Thank you, Bristol. Thank you, Dr. Ray. Next up, we'd like to welcome Stan Klaus, the mayor of the city of Kearney. Well, good afternoon, and uh, also to those online. Um, you know, this is uh, really, a, it's going to be a great conference, and uh, the point that, that I reference from is I've served with Rourke Pullman when we did the uh, Water Funding Task Force a number of years ago, and I've been on the Natural Resources Commission uh, for the state of Nebraska, and just the last couple of weeks, we've been looking and reading grants and uh, trying to determine where the uh, Water Sustainability Fund was going to be issued and, and some of those grants that we've been spending in a few days working through those grant requests. Um, so water sustainability is critical to our state. Um, as a boy, I was born in North Platte and I grew up in Brady. I, we actually lived on the banks of the Platte River. So I was a kid. I grew up and played in the river all the time. We also uh, saw what the flooding could do back in, in those days uh, on the Platte River. And, um, you know, and, and my real job is with Nebraska Public Power District. And, of course, we use uh, the water for our generating stations uh, from some of the hydros that we buy uh, power from, or we used to buy from cent uh, Central Nebraska Public Power and Irrigation District. And, of course, the importance of irrigation in our state. Uh, so, you know, water, the natural resources and what we do with our water is critical in the state. And, and the Platte River Basin is one that's uh, really essential because it comes right down through the middle of our state and ground, uh, groundwater recharge, uh, water sustainability, all those things are so important to us. Um, it, it looks like a great conference, but the other hat that I wear, as I said, is MPPD. I'm leaving here going to Lincoln for two days on the wind and solar conference. So it's, it's really kind of interesting how all these things tie in and how we're really trying to um, pay a lot of more attention now than we used to on our natural resources and how we can tie all those into a better quality of life and really maintain those natural resources. So I hope you have a great conference. Um, if you haven't been in Kearney, I don't know if this is the first time it's ever been in Kearney, but uh, certainly we hope that uh, those that are here in person enjoy the sights and sounds of Kearney. And a little side note, this facility, it was flooded out to the top of those uh, electrical outlets here not too long ago, 2019. So when we talk about flooding, it actually happens through here too. Uh, the water was trying to find a way back to the Platte River. And this is the channel that it came through on the north side of the interstate. The interstate acted as a levee. So this whole area uh, in 2019, some major flooding. So uh, enjoy your time in Kearney. Uh, we got all this stuff fixed and repaired and got great restaurants. Uh, enjoy your time and uh, thank you for choosing Kearney. Thank you, Mayor Klaus. And we'd also like to introduce uh, Charlie Bisek, the retired senior vice chancellor of academic and student affairs at the University of Nebraska here in Kearney. Well, thank you, Crystal. Uh, welcome to Kearney. Welcome to the Big Bend region of the Platte River. Uh, let me first uh, thank Chitteron John Ray, Director, Rachel Herpel, Assistant Director, Crystal Powers, and Ann Briggs for, um, for pulling this conference together. These are indeed important events, and the combination of this conference and symposium are, are important. No question about that. As Stan, Mayor Klaus had said, as Chitteron John had said, uh, the importance of water is without question. It is the key natural resource in, in our part of the country. Uh, you, know, you think about um, Nebraska, no question it's important. The Great Plains, indeed North America, the entire planet. Our system is really a closed system around the surface of the earth. 
The water we have is the water we've always had and will ever have. How we manage it, or to what extent we let it be, is up to us. It occurs to me, I'm, I'm kind of slipping into a lecture mode, uh, and, and I didn't want to do that. Chitaran John asked if I'd speak for about two hours this afternoon. I'd be happy to do so. No, five to seven minutes. But I, I did want to recount, as I was thinking about this introduction, I did want to recount um, uh, some of my experience in association with water, particularly in light of the, um, the theme of the conference. I really like that combination of science, policy, and culture. Uh, I think it's interesting to note the periodic times when there was a congruence of those three themes or those three ways of operating within, within our society, but the many times in which they're out of sync, frankly. Hence, this conference is really important. I believe our efforts to understand and, and, to, and to integrate our understanding of, of nature are more focused now than ever. And I think the evidence of that is in the panel that will um, unfold shortly after this introduction. Braided paths, indigenous, Western science, cultural perspectives. I expect a key theme of that panel will be what we all realize, everything is connected. Everything is connected to everything else. This includes the physical environment, the driving variables that influence that environment, the way it looks and the way it operates, water, temperature, the landscape, and the plants and animals that depend upon that environment, including ourselves as humans. There's no question that water is a key driving resource in natural and agroecosystems. And as I was reflecting on some comments this afternoon, I hearken back to my many years on, um, on the Central Platte NRD board in thinking about this, and some of the things that have transpired over the last 25 years. Dating back, I remember LB 108, 1996. Uh, that's essentially was the conjunctive use bill. And what that legislation really did is codify or formally recognize the hydrologic cycle or the water cycle with which we have been familiar to a significant extent for a couple of centuries, dating back to what, the early 1800s and a scientist, water scientist named John Dalton. Then there was LB 1023 in 2001. That led to the formation of the Water Policy Task Force, and I think it was probably the first entity that truly engaged in substantial, fundamental ways a whole host or variety of stakeholders. I also recall being a board member of the first well drilling moratorium that we installed in the early 2000s. The Central Platte Natural Resources District boardroom in Grand Island seated perhaps 40 or 50 people. Most of our meetings prior to that time would draw three or four or five. We had standing room only, obviously for several months because there are economic as well as ecological implications of the kinds of decisions that we were making. And obviously continuing to this day are the integrated water management strategies, uh, the fine tuning that continues of the co-heist model, the cooperative hydrology study model, uh, the work of the ne Nebraska Environmental Trust that came about or established in 1992, the Platte River Recovery Implementation Program of 97, uh, the Water for Food, already Water for Food Global Institute that was um, established in 2010. So there's really never been a stronger focus in the state of Nebraska than there is today on water. I've been off the board of the Central Platte NRD since 2016. Uh, but as I was thinking about um, uh, all that, uh, that is accomplished in our NRD system, I went back and looked at the uh, responsibilities of, of the NRDs. And this one, not just Central Platte, but any of the uh, 22 others. And that 50-year theme has always been protecting lives, protecting property, and protecting the future. And as I was looking at the website, I was reminded of the nine responsibility areas. Many of you know those. First, soil conservation and erosion control. Second, flood, flood prevention, control, and channel rectification. Third, drainage. Fourth, groundwater, surface water, and water supply. Fifth, water quality, pollution control, solid waste disposal, and sanitary drainage. Sixth, fish and wildlife habitat. Seventh, forestry management. Eight, recreation and parks, and nine, range management. Well, you don't have to read between the lines and you think about that slate or list of nine and recognize that either directly or certainly indirectly, water is prominent in every single one of them. But embedded in all of those, it strikes me, 
are the belief systems to which we all um, um, participate to a greater or lesser extent. Those belief systems may be political, they may be religious, they may be economic, may be cultural, societal, ethical. They all flavor the way that we think about uh, collectively or individually how we ought to implement uh, protecting, preserving, and maintaining for future generations our natural resource called water and all that goes with it. Well, it, this might sound like uh, an extended advertisement for the, for the NRD system in Nebraska. Uh, I guess I won't apologize for that. Uh, my goodness, 50 years this year, uh, the 23 NRD system has been in place. There is nowhere else in the country in which there is a, um, an, uh, a strong scientific or ecological basis for the nature of the way that resources, notably water, are governed. Uh, they follow um, ecological boundaries, watersheds in ways that you won't find elsewhere. And I think still to this day that the NRD system is a model for elsewhere in the country. Okay, now Chitteranjan, I know I should stop, so I, I, I am starting to lecture. Didn't mean to do that, but I wanted to say that uh, I'm so pleased, as Mayor Klaus had said, that you all are in Kearney today. Uh, the agenda over the next two and a half days is really exciting. Uh, enjoy your time here. Thanks very much, Crystal. <laughs>